So as the name suggests, this video is all about the depth in physics paper that OCR have as their specimens. You can find it on the website, and I'm sure if you're looking at this video now, you've probably had a go at this paper, and you know the questions quite well. So first of all, question number one. Okay, question number one uh, starts out with something to do with moments. And you've got a diagram here that shows a sine uh, of weight 120 newtons acting uh, on a, a rod which is held up with a wire in tension. So first of all, you've got an explanation uh, about why the, the vertical force exerted on the rod by the wire is 60 newtons. So although the tension is acting in this direction, there's also going to be a vertical component of the force which is acting up like this. And basically what I said was that if you've got the rod which is length perhaps maybe 2L, the weight that acts at the midpoint is 120 newtons acting at a length L, uh, and therefore we know something about this, we know that it's in equilibrium. And that means the sum of the moments is equal to zero. So let's take moments about this point which I've just labelled X. The clockwise moments are equal to the anti-clockwise moments and that's why it's not rotating. So the clockwise moments in this case would be 120 times L, and therefore the anti-clockwise anti-clockwise moments must be equal, which if they're at twice the distance, the force must be half as much in that vertical direction. So moments about x, uh, you've got twice the distance and therefore half the force. So I hope that kind of makes sense. So question b looks at calculating the tension in the wire, just ignore that, that was a mistake I've made to send. Uh, so that for the wire we basically know the vertical uh, component of the tension, uh, and effectively if we think about it uh, like this, we've got the tension acting along the wire, We've got a vertical component which is equal to 60 newtons, which is what the question before just gave us. And we know that this angle down here is equal to 30 degrees. So in order to find the value of t, we know that t sine 30 is equal to 60, which is what I've said over here. So therefore t is equal to 60 over sine 30, which you should probably recall sine 30 is equal to 0 0.5. And therefore the tension happens to be 120 newtons. So that is part b. When it comes to part c, draw an arrow on the, uh, the figure to show the direction of the force exerted on the rod by the wall. Well, effectively what we have is um, we've got a force acting down, we've got a force acting this way, and therefore at some point there must be a third force which is acting in this direction here. Now the force is going to be uh, at the point x here where the rod joins the, ro the, rod joins the wall, which I find quite hard to say, uh, and the force is basically directed towards this point over here. And effectively if we were to draw a line up a vertical line up uh, from the weight acting down. This is where the force arrow points to. Question D, uh, sorry, question C part two is explaining why that. Well, first of all, the system is, equal, is in equilibrium and therefore there's no net force. And what we then have is our triangle of forces. So you've got the weight acting down, you've got the tension acting here, and therefore there must be a force acting to kind of join up that triangle. And effectively, if all of these arrows join end to end, there will be zero resultant force. We also know in this case the weight is 120 newtons acting down, the tension is 120, and therefore if that's at 60 and that side there is 120, we also know that this angle here and this angle here are both equal to 60 as well. We have a nice equilateral triangle. So that's why I drew the force arrow in this position on that first question. So I hope that explanation makes, uh, makes it all kind of quite clear. Uh, and now my next video up here is all about question two.